It's no surprise that football is one of the most popular sports in the world. Athletes are viewed as stars. But it wasn't always like that. A lot has changed in the past 1,000 years, so today we're going over the entire history of football. Ancient football. It's the 12th century in England, and mob football is massive. But it's not the game of football you know today. Imagine you're in an old English village surrounded by lush green fields. The sun is shining and you could hear the distant sounds of cheering and shouting. As you approach the village square, you notice a massive crowd of men kicking around a strange looking ball. Turns out it's made of animal bladder and what you're witnessing is mob football. The object is the score on your opponent's goal and if you think the game hasn't changed much then you'd be mistaken. This is the medieval version of football with no rules and it's completely unrecognizable what we see today. Mob football was a chaotic and violent spectacle that puts two entire villages against each other. Players will do whatever it takes to score, even if that means boxing it out. Messi wouldn't stand a chance. Mob football players are fiercely competitive and they will do whatever it takes to win, even if that means sustaining massive injuries or worse, death. Despite the violence, the game has a unique charm and camaraderie that brings the community together. Fast forward over half a millennia and things begin to slowly change. Turns out England didn't like having people dying over a bladder ball. Football needed new rules, new regulations, new strategies. And that's exactly what happened. Modern football. It's 1848 and we can start to see a major shift in football. Cambridge University came up with the Cambridge rules which later evolved and became the basis for modern football. Football became more organized and structured, and this was also the time when we can see the formation of the first club, Sheffield FC. Although they were founded in 1857, it wasn't the full three years later until they finally faced their first match against another early club, Halam FC, in 1860. Sheffield destroyed Halam 2-0, all thanks to Captain Nathaniel Creswick plus another unknown player. But Halam's vengeance was lingering for over a century, and they finally got a chance for a new match in 2014 and ended up winning 1-0. By 1871, the Football Association organized the first ever cup. Just like today, it had 11 players and fans were at the edge of their seats cheering for their team to win. This marked the beginning of the Football League, which had worldwide adoption. More clubs kept joining and joining, and this allowed football to become the powerhouse sport it is today. Fast forward a few decades, and in 1892, the second division was introduced, followed by the third division in 1920, and finally, the fourth division in 1958. Just like nowadays, top teams from each division can be promoted, while bottom teams would be relegated. This allows an atmosphere of competition, an atmosphere of excitement that constantly brings fans watching and wanting their team to be number one. World Cup By the late 1800s, the first international match took place between England and Scotland. This was something never seen before, that massive crowds gathered, cheering in excitement. But no one could have predicted that this friendly match would be the start of a global football revolution. Fast forward to 1904 and the Federación Internacional de Football Association, or FIFA, was founded in Paris. The mission was to organize the sport on a global level, and not even World War I could stop that. But we'll get to that a bit later. But it wasn't until 1930 that one of the most significant events in football history took place. The first ever World Cup. It was held in Uruguay and it was a moment that would change the game forever. 13 teams from around the world took part in a tournament and the final was a nail-biting match between Argentina and Uruguay. In the end, Uruguay emerged victorious, winning 4-2 in front of a stunned crowd. And with that, the World Cup was born. Today, the World Cup is one of the most prestigious tournaments in football, held every four years and featuring 32 teams from around the world. It's a time when nations come together to support their team and the world stops for a moment, just to watch the drama unfold on the pitch. World War I Christmas It's Christmas time, the year is 1914 and the Germans were at war with the British. Soldiers from both armies are in their trenches waiting for the next battle. But something extraordinary happened on that fateful night. The Germans put down their guns, set up Christmas trees, and started singing Christmas carols. The British heard the singing and joined in. They came to a mutual truce and ended up sharing flags, goodies, beers, and cigarettes. But then, 
something magical happened. The British brought out a football from their trenches, and both sides played a match. How many people were taking part, do you think? Well, I should think there'd be at least a couple of hundred. Did you pick the ball? Oh, yes, I did go at it. I was pretty good then, 19. <laughs> it was the British cocky army versus the German grey army, and the game involved a couple hundred of soldiers. It was a lovely and touching sight to see. The soldiers, who were at war with each other, came together in the spirit of Christmas to play a fun game of football. The game was filled with drama and entertainment, and after a few moments, lights were lit to celebrate Christmas. It was a moment of peace, even in the midst of war. The soldiers salute each other after Christmas, got back to their trenches, but sadly, the war continued. They went back to fighting. Tactics Evolution in the early days of football, teams often employed a kick-and-rush approach, with players simply kicking the ball downfield and hoping for the best. The game was chaotic and unpredictable, which often led to draws. It's like watching a bunch of grown men play as if they were five years old. Over time, teams began to develop more advanced tactics in order to gain advantage on the field. The WM formation was widely used in the 1920s and 30s, and is still used by some teams to this day. It involved three defenders, four midfielders, and three forwards. Italy loved using the WM formation, and it helped them win back-to-back -back World Cups during 1934 and 1938. But soon, it gained wide adoption, and they had to figure out a way to counter it. During the 1950s, Italy developed the Catenaccio defense, which involved a tight defense formation with a sweeper player behind the back line to provide extra cover. In the recent years, football tactics have continued to evolve, with teams using increasingly sophisticated strategies in order to gain an edge on the field. One of the most popular of these tactics is called tiki-taka, which involves short, quick passes and a focus on ball possession. It was invented by Johan Cruyff after returning to Barcelona as the coach in 1988. He realized the current team was a mess, and their main competition, Real Madrid, was winning trophy after trophy, and he wanted to change that. Barcelona won four consecutive league titles and their first UCL Champions League in 1992, all thanks to Tiki Taka. Cruyff's most important player, Pep Guardiola, later modernized Tiki Taka, and this gave birth to the greatest names in football, including Lionel Messi, and won Barca so many trophies simply by using this updated technique. Another modern tactic is Gagen pressing, which involves high pressure defending and quick counterattacks. This was developed by German coach Jurgen Klopp, and has been used with great success by teams such as Liverpool and Borussia Dortmund. Greedy Business Even though football has always been popular, it wasn't always widely known like it is today. In the early days, football matches were only broadcast on local radio stations, and fans had to rely on newspapers to get their fix of the game. Everything changed by the 1930s. Television came along, and suddenly, Fans could watch their favorite teams play from the comfort of their own living room. This was a game changer, and soon, broadcasters were competing for the rights to air football matches with networks like BBC leading the way. As technology continued to advance, so did the ways in which games were broadcasted. Today, we have 4K Ultra HD broadcasts with multiple camera angles, replays, and expert analysis. Sponsorships also evolved. In the early days, they were limited to small, local businesses who would sponsor team player jerseys or stadiums to play at. But as football grew in popularity, so did the potential for big-name brands to get involved. Today, we have massive brands like Nike, Adidas, and Coca-Cola sponsoring some of the biggest football clubs in the world. Football has become a billion-dollar business with everyone wanting to get involved, including the government. In April 2021, football club owners created the Super League as a way to monetize the game as much as possible. But in reality, they were destroying the purpose of football. The fans are the reason football players are admired. The fans are the reason football stadiums are sold out. The fans are the reason football still exists.